Hello everyone. Today our topic is the judiciary, a soft class eight social sciences and political science, or in other word you call it the civics portion. In that, this chapter is chapter number five. Before starting, I would like to request that please subscribe my channel and watch my previous videos. So let's start with our today's topic, the, the judiciary. Now, when we talk about the judiciary, we must try to understand why we are studying in modern age the judiciary. In earlier part of the human civilization, you will never hear the word the judiciary or a part of government where the judiciary was there. In some uh, uh, countries or in some of the civilizations, we find somewhere that these topics were there, the judiciary in a part was there, but normally executive, legislature and the judgment or the judiciary, all these three were the parts of the king or the monarch who was controlling the whole system. And because of that, when we talk about the judiciary, it's also and over continuously in the hands of the government or the king who was holding the power at that particular time period. Because of that, we find it out every now and then in the stories also that for the judgment, the people, they ran towards the court where they discussed with these things with the king or the monarch and the letter on the judgment was from the same monarch. It means he was holding the executive power, he was holding the legislative power and he was holding also the judgment power, the judiciary power. These all things were controlled by the judiciary. But in modern age, we divided all these three in a horizontal basis in a which the judiciary was also a part, the legislature was the part and the executive, all the three, these three were separated and now we call it the distribution of power, distribution of all the executive power in three different areas so that each can check and balance the whole system. Let's talk about the judiciary as per class 8th syllabus. We are going to cover in this uh, part the introduction of that, then what is the role of the judiciary, what an independent judiciary is uh, to be talked about, then courts under judiciary, what is the structure of the court in our country, what are the different branches of the legal system, does everyone have the access to the court in our country, yes or no, that's what we are going to talk about and some of the important terms which we are going to discuss in this class. Let's introduce the topic. The introduction is the constitution of India. It secures justice to all its citizens, apart from securing liberty, equality and promoting fraternity. Indian democracy, the Supreme Court plays important role of safeguarding the fundamental rights of citizens, which include providing fair justice to all. Justice, which is the soul of a democratic society, must be administered without fear or favor. Integrity, impartiality and intelligence are some of the important characteristics of the independent judiciary in a democratic setup. Therefore, the judiciary plays a crucial role in functioning of India's democracy. Now, when we talk about democracy, now, if suppose that my elected representative is not acting what he was supposed to be or as per the constitution, then who is going to respond or who is going to force him to act like that? It's only the judiciary. We, we are going to uh, understand the rest all these things, how the judiciary function and how the judiciary control legislature and the executive. But we must try to understand one thing that as per the article 32 of our constitution, the Supreme Court is having one of the most controlled ways of controlling all these systems. Now, in India, to enforce the rule of law, we have a judicial system, which is an organ of the state. Now, when we talk about organ of the state, it means it's a part of the government of the uh, government. It doesn't mean it is the part of the executive or legislature, but it is a section of it where we cannot say the judicial system is not under any control or is also is not in such a way because when we talk about judicial system, which is an organ of the state, it means it is having an authority given by the constitution of our country. The judicial system plays an important role in functioning of our democracy that is Indian democracy. The important function of the judicial system that is the judiciary are dispute resolution, judicial review, 
upholding the law and enforcing the fundamental rights these are some of the things that you will study again in class 9th or in my class 9th uh, section if you go on my youtube you will find what this uh, enforcing the fundamental rights and judicial review and upholding of the law all these things are discussed there in india there are three different level of court that is district court high court and supreme court and in some cases we can see after uh, 19 uh, after the 1986 uh, that we find it out that the nyay panchayat is also introduced then because of that we can see and in many of the books you will find it out that there are four different levels of court nyay panchayat is there then district courts are there the high courts are there then the supreme court is there the law declared by the supreme court is binding on all courts as it is the highest level of court in our country supreme court is headed by the chief justice and 25 other judges and they are appointed by the president of india but they are not whole and sole controlled by the president of india president of india elect the senior most judge as the chief justice of supreme court and on his guideline he select next chief justice and next judges of the supreme court plus chief justice of different high courts also on his suggestion only that the president selects appoints all the other judges and normally the case is of seniority nothing else the question is what is the role of the judiciary now we have already discussed about dispute resolution and uh, judicial review and upholding the law and enforcing fundamental right here some of the explanations are there that judicial system provides a mechanism of code for resolving disputes between citizens citizens and the government two state governments and the central and the state government now when we talk about dispute resolution in between whom if two individuals are fighting on any particular topic then they must in due process that they are going to the district court then to the high court then to the supreme court but supreme court is being supreme court being the final institution of judgment they hear the case in between the two citizens then if the case is in between the citizen and thus the government it may be the state government it may be the central government but if it the case is in between the center or the state government and the citizen that also is to be in, in front of supreme court or the judiciary then the two state government if it is in between the two state government then directly the case is with whom with the supreme court of india and if it is the central and the state government then also the case is to be with the court these all the things are where the court have interference now when we talk about in between the citizens then it may be the district high court district court or high court but if it is involved with the government that the two governments or citizen and the government if the two state government or the central and the state governments are there then it is always in high court and supreme court then the second one is the judicial review the judiciary has the power to strike down particular law passed by the parliament if it believes that these are the violation of the basic structure of the constitution now again try to understand if suppose that today or tomorrow or day after tomorrow if any state or if central government passed a resolution that this particular type of whatsoever the constitution or the law that is made by the uh, government of that day is the violation of basic structure of the constitution then they can nullify that particular law they can say no we are not ready to accept this now again the question is who is going to clarify that what is the basic structure of the constitution again it is the supreme court which is going to explain what is the basic structure of the constitution and at that particular time period they will say now the government whatsoever the legislature is made is wrong we are going to strike down that you must change that you must have something correction over it the third one is upholding the law and enforcing fundamental right every citizen of the india can approach the supreme court or the high court in his or her fundamental rights have been violated suppose the right to life number 14 or right to equality is there any other right from article 14 till article 30 31 was a strike off by the 42nd amendment in 1977-78 and so on the people who were against this uh, uh, right to property and because of that this law was striked off this fundamental right but rest of the fundamental rights are existing there and if anybody feels that this is our fundamental right and it is violated either by the court 
like you may have gone through many of the small cases are there where the people reach high court or supreme court that this particular uh, our rights are violated by the police or by the by the government of that uh, state or the central government then they can move to supreme court or to the different high court okay, sir please listen to them they are doing the wrong thing these are our fundamental rights and you cannot uh, restrict our fundamental right then at that particular time period the supreme court or the high court of the state or the supreme court of the india they can listen they can put they can say even they can nullify they can force the police or the government to abide by the law of the land whatsoever written in constitution that must be followed by these people then comes what is the role of the judiciary we will have uh, all these things like in india there are two branches of the legal system one is civil law another one is criminal law in civil law we deals with any harm or injury to the rights of an individual it means if any particular right is taken away that doesn't mean fundamental right it may be anything suppose that a land dispute is there that is always going to be in civil court if uh, any separation or in between the divorce type of case is there then it is always going to be in civil law but if there is anything that conducts deals with conduct or act with the law of defiance and offense then it's always going to be in criminal law supreme court has decided a mechanism called public interest litigation pil so that a poor person can easily get access to justice the rule of law is enforced through a judicial system which consists of mechanism of courts whenever a law is violated one can approach these courts now when i talk about pil in a particular case while supreme court was listening they said it even if a postcard is written to them and with that if they find it out that the fundamental right or a particular law is violated then we will definitely listen to that because the person is poor it doesn't mean that the justice must not be given to that individual justice is not only for the rich as per our constitution as per our honorable supreme court and different high courts justice is for each and every one even if the person is unable to afford then it is the responsibility of the government what is an independent judiciary that is the next question judiciary is the guardian of the constitution and defender of fundamental rights of the people for performance of this role it is essential that the judiciary must be independent it must not be controlled by any individual either the salary or the appointment or anything must not be controlled by the government of that day or else the judgment cannot be the judiciary cannot work in proper way india has an independent judiciary that always the courts to play a central role in ensuring that there is no misuse of power by the legislature and the executive it plays a crucial role in protecting the fundamental rights of citizen because anyone can approach the court if they believe that their rights have been violated now you see if our courts are not independent what will happen to them then they will unable to deliver judgment against the government even the government of the day can do any type of law they can make any law they can curtail any type of fundamental rights of the citizen of the country and nobody can move to court because the government is controlling the judiciary also therefore in our country as per our constitution judiciary is fully independent to an extent they are while in consultation because the president is whole and solely as per our constitution but as per the guideline of the chief justice of supreme court the appointment is to be done now later on there is a panel which decides who is going to be the next chief justice and so on that is the basis where when we call that the independent judiciary in our country is totally independent the judiciary is an organ of the state it plays a major role in democratic country it performs several functions the judiciary not only applies the law of the country it also settles disputes and punishes the guilty these disputes may take place between citizen between citizens and the government between two state government and between the central and the state government the judiciary has the power to modify or cancel laws if it finds that they violate the basic structure of the constitution this is now as judicial 
review. In case our fundamental rights are violated, we can approach the Supreme Court or the higher court. In this sense, the court play a very significant role in protecting our fundamental rights. What is an independent judiciary? We have an independent judiciary. It means that the courts are not under the government and do not act on their behalf. The courts play a central role in ensuring that there is no misuse of power by the legislature and the executive. There are three different levels of court in our country. At the district level, we have subordinate district courts. At the state level, we have several high courts. The high court is the highest judicial authority in the state. At the top is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of India is the highest judicial authority in our country. It is located in Delhi and is presided over by the Chief Justice of India. The decisions made by the Supreme Court is binding on all other courts in our country. We have an integrated judicial system. It means that the decision made by the higher court are binding on the lower courts. Different levels of courts are connected to each other through the appellate system, which means that a person can appeal to a higher court if they are not satisfied with the judgment passed by the lower court. Now, here you can see the court under judiciary, the Supreme Court in Delhi is only one. Then high courts are there in each and every state. They are there, but we are not having 28, all of that. Because like Punjab and Haryana, they are only having one high court at Chandigarh. It means that the separation of everything is there, but only one high court. That doesn't mean the two high courts, you cannot say 28 there. At the district court, one in every district, the district courts are there. This is how the court system goes on. Now, at the lowest level, the district court is there. If you are not satisfied with the judgment, you can appeal to the higher court of that state. Even what the judgment is given, you are not satisfied, then you can move to the Supreme Court of India. Whatsoever the judgment is there, that is binding upon every party who is in the country. But try to understand one thing. The system of district to higher and higher to Supreme, higher court to, to the Supreme Court is known as appellate system you can appeal to the higher, to the higher, to the higher sections of the judiciary. Now here again, what the structure of the court in our country, in India, we have already gone through. There are three different level of court in our country. Several courts are at the lower level, which only one of the, one at the apex level, that is the Supreme Court. At district level or subordinate court, most people interact at this level. Each district is presided by district judge. State level court, that is the high court, is the highest court of the state. Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of India, is the highest judicial authority. So it, it is located in New Delhi and is presided over the Chief Justice of India. The decisions made by the Supreme Court are binding on all other courts in India. In India, we have integrated judicial system, meaning that the decisions made by the higher court are binding on the lower court. As all these different levels of courts are connected to each other, Appellate system, I have already talked about. Now the definition, this means that a person can appeal to a higher court if they believe that the judgment passed by the lower court is not just. This system exists in India. It is another way that defines the integration of all the levels of courts in our country. What is the structure of the court? When we talk about the court cases, they are classified into two civil cases deals with matters like money, property, inheritance, marriage, disputes, etc. Criminal cases deals with the cases of theft, cheating, robbery, physical injury and murder. In civil cases, a petition has to be filed before the relevant court by the affected party only. The court gives the specific relief asked for. Criminal cases usually begin with the lodging of an FIR with the police who investigate the crime after which a case is filed in the court, it found guilty, the accused can be sent to jail. Does everyone have access to the court? This is one of the most important case. Uh, and it, just before the PIL, we can say, no, this was not there. And because of that, only the Supreme Court devised a mechanism of PIL. In principle, all citizens of India can access the court in this country. This implies that every citizen has a right to justice through the courts. Legal procedures involve a lot of money and paperwork which take up a lot of time. Poor people often avoid to go to court to get justice. The Supreme Court devised a mechanism of public interest litigation or PIL to increase access to justice in 1980s. It allowed any individual organization to file a PIL in the High Court or the Supreme Court on behalf of those whose right 
were being violated. The legal process was simplified and even a letter or telegram addressed to the Supreme Court or the High Court could be treated as a PIL. The court exercised a crucial role in, in interpreting the fundamental rights of citizens. The judiciary serves as a check on the powers of the executive and the legislature and protecting the fundamental rights of the citizen. Now, some of the important terms are there, like the first one is judicial system. It is a mechanism of code that a citizen can approach when a law is violated. Then the word is judicial review. The judiciary has the power to modify or cancel particular laws passed by the parliament if it finds that they do not adhere to the constitution. This is known as judicial review. Violation, it means breaking a law or encroaching someone's fundamental rights. Separation of power, it means that the power of the state and the power of the judiciary are separate. We don't have mixed power. The state and the power of judiciary are totally different and clarified in what matter where the courts are have the final say where the state government is having the final say state government or the central government that means the government is having the final say then important terms like in independent judiciary means the judiciary is not under the government and does not act on its behalf to appeal to file a petition before a higher court acquit the court declaring that a person is not guilty of the crime which he she was tried for by the court civil law it deals with matter like money property marriage disputes etc Criminal law deals with the case of theft, robbery, cheating, murder, etc. PIL it stands for Public Interest Litigation. It has been devised to facilitate justice. These are some of the important terms that we have studied in this class only. I am not saying that judiciary, this is, this is what the judiciary is all about. This is only, I can say, a preface of the total judiciary system. When you will move forward in class 9th and 10th in graduation in and when you will study law, you will understand what the judiciary is all about. Have a nice day. Bye, all of you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank for watching. We will meet in my next video again. Please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified my next video. And if you have any doubt, you all can ask me in comment section. Once again, thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for watching.